Let's let some people get in here. Oh, let's go from this side. Hey, what up, Fidel? What up, Britton? Cecil? My man? You guys ready to win a clipper? Hold up, hold up. Who's ready? Who's ready? I got the magic clips right here on deck. Alright? That's that's what's up. What's up, Luis? What's up, uh, San Santiago? Um, Anna? Alright, you ready? Who's ready to win this thing? Alright, check it out. Uh, I'm about to do a, a, another video. I'm working on one right now. And I'm about to give this guy here. He's going to get a fade with a hard part. And we're going to film for it. We're going to release this later. Damn, there's already 30 of you guys in here? That's what's up. Do the fade slow. All right, why? You want me to hang around and film this whole fade live? I got I to gotta work these other cameras too, you know? Ah, uh, what's up? What's up? All right. So we're getting some people in here. Let's... Let's let a couple more people go on here. What's up, Juan? Good to see you. What up? J-Rock, what up? Oh, wow. All right, 30 people. All right, bet. So can you go to the video, uh, Sterling? Go to the video real quick. That's my man, Sterling. He's in training here, and he's filming. Uh, so I go, to you, go to the video real quick. Oh, you got an Apple phone? Yeah. Anybody got an Android? The phone works? All right, we're gonna go and we're gonna do the random comment picker. Just got done with your last cut. Good, good deal, yeah. GTS, what's up, man? Welcome. All right, somebody, uh, y'all got iPhones? All right, so I'm the only one with an Android here. I'm outnumbered. I said fast feed cutting. I mean, it wouldn't kill me to plug in the feeds. Hey, thank you, Ariel, I appreciate that. Yo, what's up? What's up, man? I bet. So let's go to the video real quick. Not the live feed. Go to the, the video that I'm, I'm releasing. We're going to look at the comments. Remember, you guys had to like, comment, and share that video in order to be entered. I'm got Facebook. And, um, you know, IG? No, no, go the YouTube channel. Go to the YouTube channel. I probably should have went over, over this before him. Thank you, Brooklyn. I appreciate that. Oh, you got the S10 Plus? All right. Want to learn how to fade now. Um, well, we're going to get started here with this fade here in a second. No, I'm not using the magic clip for this play. It's not even all charged up yet. <laughs> I'm not using the magic clip. I was actually going to just use a wall senior five star. All right, I'll tell you guys right now. Vote, what do you want to see? The wall five star senior or would you rather see me use the fast feeds? I'll go either way. I got the fast feeds in the bag. Vote right now. Whoever. Wall, wall senior or fast feeds? All right, we got one for the feeds. One for the seniors, two for the feeds. First to five wins. Three, that's four. Oh God, they're coming in quick. All the seniors are winning. All right, all right. I guess you guys want to see the seniors. The seniors. All right, all right, how, about, how about this, how about this? Half of the head will use the seniors, the other half of the head will use the, the feeds, all right? Let me plug them in real quick. I got them. You know, I stay with them right here on deck. Hello from England, what's up? All right, did you get the video up, bro? All right, so the video, not this video. <laughs> Go to the other video. Let me see your phone real quick. This is how we're gonna do it. All right, this ain't all that scientific. All right, I'm just using his phone. And uh, the video that I released that on, this one here, he's gotta wait for the ad, he can't skip. All right, so what I'm going to do, this ain't all that scientific. I'm just going to fly through these comments, and whoever uh, my, my name stops on, that's, that's who's going to win this thing, all right? So right here, let's see how many comments we got. We got 123 comments, so there's 123 potential wins. Okay, let me tell you guys this. If I stop on you and it turns out you want it and you don't and you haven't shared the video and you didn't share it, I will find out and I will um, probably not send that clipper to you. So whoever whoever wins it, wins it. So we got 123 comments. Some of the people here, I got Chris, MM, Gucci, Tabar, Leroy. All right, I'm just gonna spin. 
Show more comments, show more comments. Then we're just going to go real quick down the list. This is like the best that I could do. All right. Uh, hello, Jennifer. Thank you for joining. All right, I'm going to do a couple more of these. All right, so this is good. We got it. We got it spinning here. There's 123 people here. I'm just going to go real quick, real quick. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Boom. Okay, we got Anthony Mendoza. Anthony Mendoza. Hey, is Anthony watching this right now? Who's Anthony Mendoza? Who's Anthony Mendoza? Is he watching right now? Let's see what's up. He said, this is his comment. I'm going to read it to you guys. I need to learn the shortcuts. It takes me 45 minutes to an hour and 20 minutes for a full cut. What's your average time on a cut? And shame on me, I didn't even reply, I didn't even reply to him. My average time on a cut is 20 minutes. And um, you know, if, if a person is taking an hour and 20 minutes, there's definitely some, some problems going on there. So, all right, Anthony, I'm gonna check you out and see if you shared this video. And I'm gonna let him know, you just won the wall magic clips Please DM me your information so I can send them out to you. All right, bet. He's done. So let's get started with this fade. You guys want to hang out for this for a little bit? Because um, I'm going to have to film, like, the rest of this stuff. We're going to film it good. We're going to find out if he shared it. I don't know if he shared it yet. I'm going to find out. I got a way to find out. I just got to look afterwards. If not, I'll let you guys know real soon, and I will make sure that I repost it. And boom, we wind up giving it to somebody else. But I'll tell you guys what. Um, we're going to be giving away a uh, Oscar Fast Feed Home Front Edition. Thanks to a guy named Derek who really hooked it up. He sent me that and the double magnetic guards. So we're going to be giving those away real soon. And we're going to, um, someone's going to be really happy. That Home Front Edition is looking slick. And it's got all the guards, everything you would want. And it's got the... Um, ceramic blade on it too so uh let's get it all right so we're gonna start this fade off one of the students here he's got a uh great clipper here well a little trimmer here this is actually the first time i used it so we're gonna start this thing off right here with this with this guy right here all right so it's really hard for me to film all this at the same time i'll start the fade with the seniors but i don't know if i'm gonna be able to hang out for the whole thing because we're getting this other thing going here so i'm gonna have somebody else hold that so i'm gonna hold that let me make sure this is feeling good Hi, Ben. You ready? I'm ready. All right, you guys ready? Come mm -hmm. on over here. So y'all can see how I do it. All right, so I'm gonna begin by just putting this line in, and it'll be good to see uh, how how. Actually, you know what? You can probably flip that around. Hold up, right here. Oh. Better? Mm -hmm. Alright, now rotate it back to landscape. Yeah. Alright, everybody good? Everybody can see? Alright, so we're just going to begin. I just want to see well the line these can make. You guys know that I don't like balding out with a pair of trimmers. I've told you guys many times on this channel. It's not something I ever do in the shop. But I really didn't plan on filming this uh, tonight. This was just an opportunity. I realized he needed a haircut. These guys wanted to learn a fade, so... We're just going to start this out like this, okay? So right now, just to give you guys a little feel for like how well these are cutting, they cut really good um, right side up, actually. Which is kind of funny, because a lot of these sort of struggle on the right side up cut, and they cut really good when I move down with them, or uh, when I move down with them like upside down. How's it feel on your head, Ben? Feels fine. Fashion, nothing like that? No, not at all. All right, so I'm going to get this big going here. I'm going to jump to this other side. I always tell you guys this, like, in my videos, like, don't try to make the fade all the way around from one side to the other. You're going to have a hard time matching it up. So I'm always going to come here in the front. I'm going to look at what I did over here, and I'm going to be able to match it a whole lot better by not doing that.
These things are boosting through the hair pretty good. I gotta be honest, I'm a little bit impressed with these outliners. I really thought that they would struggle a little bit more. And they're actually they're actually working pretty good. Hey, uh, can one of you guys go in that black bag and get the get the fast feeds out? Yeah, first bag. It's uh, that black bag right there. There's somewhere in there. So the best part is that one of the students got a um, one of the students got a uh, Bronze Series Nine to use too. So I almost feel like I'm working with my own stuff, just about. If you guys got any questions, please ask. I can answer. Just read me the questions, Stanley. If any uh, it's not reading. Like, does it pop up? Or? Yeah, if anybody's got any questions, anybody's watching, got any questions, just please um, ask me. I mean, this is just a live demonstration here. I, I'm more than happy to help you guys and, and answer your questions or whatever. Oh, I see him now. A lot of you guys have been talking about struggling or time it takes you and things like that. I mean... Basically, all, all your fades sort of need to start this way. He, he had a good amount of length. I didn't have to like pre-cut this or anything, but if, you're, if your client's got like a lot of length, you're gonna wanna make sure that you, you pre-cut that so that I can knock this all the way down. With the Bronze Series 9, I'm coming up to the line and I'm flicking away. I'm coming up to this line and I'm flicking away. I'm flicking out. And I just wanna wipe out all this hair. I don't really care about hair that's attached to his ear. This is kind of one of them time-saving tips because I'm going to go back with the straight razor anyway, so why am I going to bother myself with it now? I just want to wipe out all this hair, anything I can get to, get them completely balded out. Bronze Series 9 is a beast. How long should it take for the minutes. bald line? Oh, the bald line, I'm going to knock that out pretty quick. The bald line um, on one side of the head, you know, it really shouldn't take me too too long you're gonna you're gonna see i mean a couple minutes jackie hancock do you have any tips for blending hair with different textures uh as far as what jackie can you elaborate are you talking about like you know black hair versus white hair versus asian hair or stuff like that Richard Liu, is a trimmer really needed for skin fades? As I don't have one yet. If so, what would you recommend to get? I would tell you guys to get a Slimline Pro Li. I think it's the best. Um, I think it's the best for the dollars. I love to use the Slimline Pro Li or an Andis GTX. I really like that one too. I think they're both good. But yes, it is absolutely necessary to do skin fades. You're not going to be able to do edge up, skin fades. You're going to be severely limited if um, you choose not to, to have them. Jack, right, so for this side, we'll do the feeds. I'm going to knock the line out with the feeds, all right? We're going to begin with the feeds in an open position. Oh, they feel so nice. And God, do I like my feeds. Jackie, hair that's partly curly and partly straight hair. Well, Jackie, I would tell you this. You ain't going to win a beauty contest with every client. Some people have hair that's incredibly difficult and uh, probably not really post-worthy, if you know what I mean. But like sometimes you can relax a curl by using a texturizing shear or some thinning shears or something of that nature. Um, it all kind of depends. Like if they have a combination of straight and curly hair, yeah, that's, that's going to be tough to deal with. But generally on like the skin phase and the blending part, that part of it will be the same. You're going to struggle more towards the top, the periodal ridge area. All right, so can one of you guys grab me a brush that I can knock the hair away with? That little brush that you had. All right, so all I did so far was I began with it in the open position, and you can see how much that's already dissipated the line a lot. So I'm just going to begin by closing this just a little bit, and I'm going to come kind of close to where I was with that line, but notice I'm lifting off of the edge here. I'm coming off of the edge. And I'm just sort of coming close to the top of that line, but I'm staying just underneath it. I haven't touched the lever again. Thank you, boss. All right. Now I'm just going to knock away any loose hair. And you see that his grain kind of comes down like this.
Right, so I want to open this back up real quick and just make sure that I've met that grain um, directly against the grain and that I've wiped that all out. Now I'm closing it a little bit and I'm begin knocking out the actual line. So little by little. Am I going too fast? No, no, you're perfect. When I use wall magic clips, I lost what next guard I must use. So any tips? Um, so you, you lost what guard? Your half guard or something? I'm not sure what, you know, if, if you lost what guards you need, they're not that expensive. I would go back to the store and probably get them because your haircuts are going to be sacrificing quality. So notice how I'm just using the corner to knock that out. Now you can see that, like, I haven't even closed this halfway, and already most of that line is gone, right? Now as I close this a little bit further, we're going to find that that line's going to start to just get Debo. It's gone. All right, and let me ask you guys a question. What are you gonna do if this line is not gone when I'm done with this clipper? What would you do? I'm gonna go all the way down now, all the way. Ariel Avina, do guidelines have need to be perfectly straight and even? Nope. The answer to that is absolutely not. Your guideline could be messed up. As long as you make up for it in the end, that's the only thing that matters. All right, so you guys can see that that line is, is mostly gone, right? And um, what I could do now, always step back before you step forward. I like to come in here with the trimmer that I use, and I'm gonna just use the corners just a little bit and just bust up that line, any, anything that I, I got left. This step isn't always necessary, and maybe in this case it really isn't, but sometimes this is an, a very necessary step, step back um, before you step forward. All right, so I'm gonna knock out this line on the side of his head with the wall seniors. All right. Wall Juan seniors. Cordova, what, uh, use what you put the line in with. All right, so. For the trimmer question. Well, not necessarily. If you put it in with a 5-0, I wouldn't. I would still go back to the trimmer because it's a little bit easier to do. All right, so I'm going to use the half attack on this side. I have the half closed, and I'm just going to do the same thing I did over there. I'm going to make another guideline. Jonathan Estrada, is kids' hair harder to cut, or is it just my technique? Um, kids' hair can be harder to cut because it's usually more fine and that's gonna give you more trouble. It's gonna pick up a lot of lines in some cases. So a lot of times when I cut kids hair, something I do to make it a little bit easier is I might give myself a little leeway. Like I might pick a guard that's a little bit longer. I might not put such a harsh skin line in if the kid has a really fine head of hair. I do the same thing with like Asian hair too. Like if Asian, if I'm working with Asian hair, I know it's real fine, I know it's real straight, I know it's gonna give me some trouble. So I might not put that, that harsh skin line all the way in, so to make it just a little bit easier to get out. Barbara Fidel, how far up do you go with the trimmer? Well, it depends how high you want the skin fade to be. See, in this case, I went midway, right? So I got like a mid skin fade or so. If I'm above the perio ridge, which we talk about this all the time, but if I took a comb, I place it flat alongside of the head, right where it leaves the hair, okay? That's the periodal ridge. If your skin line is above or on that, it's gonna be a pretty high skin fade. If your skin line's below that, it's gonna be on the lower side. So I would just address it with your client. You're looking for a high, a medium, a low fade, and you know that would, that would usually solve that problem. All right, so now that I put my line in with the half, I'm gonna begin my actual taking out of that line by opening this up, and I'm just gonna follow up right after, right where I went. If anybody hasn't tried the half attack, I really encourage you guys to go and give this a try. You're going to find it super, super easy to wipe out this bottom line. Begin closing it little by little. And the wall senior is just, just wolfing down that hair. Very easy to get to it. Mike has a question. I'm struggling, man. My blade is flat, but I still make lines, even when going on angle. Does pressure affect that? Please help. Oh, absolutely. You want to make sure you maintain the pressure. I mean, the guy who's filming you was just going through the same 
going through the same thing. Sterling, what was the difference that, that you felt the second time you went back in, you know what I mean, after we made that adjustment? Like, what was it? Well, I noticed that I wasn't connecting to the hair all the way because I wasn't using enough pressure on the client's head. So I wasn't able to create any transition because in reality, I wasn't cutting any hair. So until I started pressing down harder is when I got a nice gradient right. to my haircut. Now that's that's pretty cool because actually when you when you get right down to it, probably what he's where he's going wrong is he he isn't putting enough pressure. All right, so you see how easy that skin line. I just melted through that skin line like there was nothing to it. I started with it open, come up to the top, close it slightly, keeping it on an angle, keeping that maintaining that contact. And uh, I don't know how it's looking in that camera, but from this camera and from my viewpoint, it's, it's looking pretty pretty strong. So like you guys can see that once you get that skin line in, it's quick. You can get it out. Sean Johnson. So there is a difference. So there is a difference between the cordless Sterling 4 and the cordless Wall Senior? I, I really don't know the truth of that. I've worked with both of them and I could say the cordless Wall Senior felt like it had a little bit more power but I can't really say 100% for one way or the other. I really haven't owned one, I've just used it. I've used quite a few Wall Senior cordlesses and I tell anybody, anybody out there that, that the cordless game right now is just not good enough to make a believer out of me and I'd much rather have my cord any day of the week because like if I can just melt through skin phase um, and save time, that's what I want to do. I don't want to waste any time, you know, uh, with, with what I'm trying to do. So, all right, we got the skin line pretty much knocked out. This is the part where a lot of you guys make mistakes. A lot of you guys are going to jump forward. Um, uh, you guys are going to jump forward before you're done with this step. Make sure that it's perfect from skin to open taper. Make sure that it's perfect. You don't want to be coming back here. You don't want to be doing this again. So I'm going to look back through. I'm looking for any mistakes, anything that I can fix up. And if I feel like it's clean, I'm going to I'm going to move on forward. It's so important. It's like a checkpoint here that you want to make sure that you you see and you address. So being that. He's gonna take it all the way up to the line, to the part. Uh, we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna put the one on, I'm one and one half on, and uh, I'm just gonna take it right alongside that part line, and I'm gonna cut all that hair that's sticking out off. Do you ever skip guards when fading, and how? Uh, well, there's ways to do that. It doesn't make sense to, I really don't. But what you could do is you could be using a little bit more of a C motion. And in that case, you can skip some guards. Probably the guards that I would say I skip most often are anything above a number two. Anything above a two, I mean, you know, I could I could usually get that done with some wrist movement or definitely some clip rope or comb, which you're gonna see me use on that other side. So now that I got that bulk removed, I'm gonna open this up. I'm gonna do some of the bulk removing on this side too. This would be the type of movement I would make if I was trying to skip guards. I just want to get rid of some of this bulk. I'm kind of coming off the head. I tell you guys all the time, this is not a necessary technique. You don't have to do this. You don't have to learn this. It's just something that's meant to try to save you some time. And um, you know, it, it can be used or it can be ignored. You can use guards to accomplish this. I'm gonna use clipper over comb. I began with this open. I'm gonna begin closing it. Keeping it on an angle. Do you find a lot of, do you find a lot any of your customers getting ingrown hair with the Braun 9? Uh, almost never with the Braun Series 9. I gotta be honest, with the Braun Series 9, I, I really haven't had any ever. If in fact, I would say using the Braun Series 9 has reduced the amount of complaints I've been getting about uh, that kind of stuff. The Wall Finale, the Andis Pro Foil, um, the Babyliss, they, they all were a little bit rough. And plenty of clients can, can complain about that, but the Series 9, never. I, I would rate the Series 9 among one of the best purchases I've ever made um, in, in the barber game. Okay. Nick Hub, I want to get my barber's license. have been cosmetologist for a long time. Can you do a, a shave state board quality? 
Uh, it depends what state you're in, but yeah, I can do a shave. I have a shave on the channel, and I've, I've done plenty of shaving on the channel. All right, so I'm going to go to the number one now. Remember, I did it with the one and one half, so really, this is going to be super easy to get this line out. Um, the last little bit, I could take it almost all the way up to the line on this side. And I'm going to begin closing this little by little. Barbara Fidel, my hand hurts after a haircut. Is there a proper way to hold the clipper? Well, yeah, actually, there's there's four clipper positions. And, of course, people can do any number of things. What I'm using right now is called the handshake grip. Uh, this is like clipper position number one, according to the book. Number two, some people hold it over like this. Uh, number three is, is kind of holding it for cutting the top. And actually, number three is the pencil grip. That was number four, just for like when I'm cutting the top. And the pencil grip is, uh, is number three. So it's usually a combination of one of these things. If you're doing something different, there's a chance that, yeah, you could leave yourself open for you know, some, some possible injury in the future. Does the main guideline have to be perfect? No, no, we already answered that earlier, and absolutely not. As long as you've addressed the blend afterwards and you're able to straighten out, there's plenty of times where I don't put in a perfect guideline and I can still come up with a really good haircut afterwards. All right, so I went from the one. I'm coming back to the half. I'm going to open the half, and I'm just going to wipe out this, uh, this last little bit. Ariel Avino. Are Andy's double magnetic guards better than wall premium guards? Because I have magic clips, but I want to buy fast feeds later on, so I wait to buy premium guards once I get the fast feeds. Um, that's kind of like the great debate. You know, that's kind of like, is Pepsi better than Coke? I mean, I, I think that the Andy's double magnetic guards definitely offer something cool in the fact that you know they're secure and they don't fall off but i gotta be honest i've never had any trouble with the wall guards i like using the wall clippers i like using the wall guards especially the premiums i'm gonna come back and just clean this up a little chicago love from Luis. today was my second day of barber school your videos helped me a lot you're a big time motivator love from chicago I really appreciate that Luis, and i'm wishing you luck my friend i hope you got the you know, I hope you I hope you find the drive to get all the way through. But it's a lot of people that start barber school um, that, for whatever reason, in their personal life or whatever, they don't make it all the way through. I hate to see that, man. I like to see people um, power through. I've had some students in the past that have had every reason to quit. I mean, one student in particular, I'm not going to say who it is, uh, but uh, this this kid went through a lot of stuff, and uh, I just don't know if. if I could have kept on, but he did keep on and he got his license and I'm, I'm super happy and proud uh, with him. And there's been many people who've come through this school. We work at the Benita Springs School here in Naples, Florida, or Benita, Florida. And I think I've seen just about any kind of student come and go. Um, convicts, uh, people who were former drug addicts, people who were you know, reforming in their life, young kids, 16, 17 years old, sign up. I've seen it all, man. Sean Johnson, how long have you been licensed? I've been licensed since 2005, and I started cutting hair um, in a shop in 2003. My whole family was in the hair business. It was nothing for me to really get into it. It was kind of already sort of prearranged that I would wind up doing this. I just didn't know it was going to last this long, I'll be honest. <laughs> Do you, see his blend. Men's Club Barbershop, do you find that wall cordless clippers batteries go dead, meaning unchargeable faster than other cordless brands? Well, to be honest, I gave away, I had two pairs of them, and I gave them away before I ever ran into any issues like that. And that's kind of that's kind of why I'm in the team cord. I mean, you see me with the cord, uh, I don't care about the cord I'll, I'll take a cord as long as it gives me a good quality uh work every time and i don't need to worry about it or fight with it give me a cord but i never had a wall um cordless senior long enough to to have that happen but i did have one get extremely loud and probably if i would have kept it i think i would have sent it back uh to wall 
Mike Ward, Mr. Buffalo, your shop looks very nice. Do you still teach? And do you use the Andy's Pro Cordless? Oh, uh, well, I use the I use the Andy's Slimline Pro Cordless. Uh, yes, I still teach. In fact, we're, we're doing it right now. I mean, I got these guys over here at the school. And uh, thank you on the compliment for the shop. I, I appreciate that. You know, there's some renovations that I want to do. There's some changes that I want to make, but... Overall, I'm, I'm pretty happy with how everything is going right now. I mean, it's kind of one of those things, like the great debate, like should you start your own shop? Should you try to buy a shop that's established? Uh, if that's an opportunity for you. One thing I could say is it's, it's kind of difficult getting others to do the stuff that you want them to do. Um, if you buy a shop that's already pre-established, it, it kind of kind of does create a little bit of friction there like you're the new owner you have new ideas about how you want the business run and the people who've been there for years are like hey we got a system here it's working for us and you know you, you might you might run into a little friction there with some people Ariel how do you take out the guideline made by the one open guard do you only use one close and a 0.5 half open um all right, so can you read that one more time? I'm trying to understand what she's asking. How do you take out the guideline made by the one open guard? Do you only use one closed and a .5 half open? Well, how do you get the one open guard right, out? So the one open guideline is the same as every other guideline. So like that was what I actually did before I returned to this step. I did it open, I did it closed, and as you guys can see, like the blend is, is starting to come out pretty good. And I don't really have any complaints about it. I'm happy with it. I like to shave the bottom and take care of the edge up and stuff like that. And it's gonna be good. So we're gonna begin with it open with the one. So if I go back to it, just to give you the example area, all right, I'll go back with the one. Initially, I was working in this area. I started with it wide open like this, right? And I came down just a little bit, keeping it on an angle, maintaining those corners all the way down a little bit. Now I'm dropping down a little bit lower. And I continue coming all the way until I'm all the way down and I got nothing more to cut. That's pretty much the way I'm going to work that one um, down. Nathan, um, I'm struggling to blend between beard trimmer and zero on wall magic clipper. Have you got any tips? Struggling to blend between what? The beard trimmer and zero on wall magic clipper. Any tips? Well, I would tell you that you definitely want to make sure that you're your equipment is set up good. You want to make sure that you have all your blades so that they're, they're zero gap and you can get down low enough. And then if you follow the steps that I just showed in this video, I really don't think you're going to struggle as, as much. You'll find it a whole lot easier to get that out. I like to use this grip a lot of times when I do edge ups. A lot of you guys have been asking me to do videos on edge ups. Like, I like to use the pencil grip a lot, and I do. And, um, it just makes it a little bit easier so I don't have to like reach across it so hard and I just come in there and just kind of keep looking in your mirror, checking them out, making sure it's even. Like I say, these things are hitting pretty good. Like I'm, I'm kind of happy with the way these are. These are cool. Will you make a how to open a barbershop tutorial? I'm still kind of new at that, I gotta be honest. <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually have, like, this, this is a good question. I actually have learned a lot of stuff during the opening process that, like, there was a lot that I thought I knew, but, like, I, I, I really didn't. I didn't know as much as I thought I knew. There's, there's a lot of little things to it, and I suppose I could probably put a little something together. And, um, you know, all the stuff that I went through, maybe, maybe it could help somebody else. Can you teach how to fade with... Andy's blades only? Oh, yeah, I have videos like that. I mean, I, I have videos that, that that's what I used. You can look back a few videos. I was getting really hot on the Mandis Fade Masters, and I was just using them in a lot of videos. So I use them in like three, four videos. Ed, how do you like those cordless T outliners? Uh, these aren't mine, actually. Uh, believe it or not, I'm just using them from a student. But so far, I think they're pretty awesome. I really like them. So do you guys think you should get a design? Oh, that's funny, because Brooklyn5510 said, can you do designs? Ah, let's go. Let's go there. All right. Let's do it. So you're going to put a little design in here? Let's do it. Uh-oh. Let's see. Let's see.
Which side we want to do it on? Should I do it on the left side or should I do it on the right side? What y'all think? We got answers? Left side or right side? All right, hang on. Before I do this design, though, I'm going to show this one little spot here. What I do all the time to make my line come out clean, like, look, you got a lot of little hairs that are going to be sticking out here. Right? You got a lot of little hairs here that are not going to be, you know, doing all that good to stick out. So I take this blade, I come right in there, wipe them out. Sometimes I do this with scissors too. Is that one open? Yeah, I just got the one slightly open, but mainly I'm hanging it out on an angle um, so that it can be, you know, good to go. Hey, can you guys give me a straight razor? and some, some shave gel or something. The right side wins. All right, so the right side wins. So we're going to do something here. Let's see here. Aztec homie, just want to say that I just started watching your videos and subscribe to your channel and thank you brother for all your hard work. Keep it up. I appreciate that man. I gotta be honest man, these things are hitting pretty good. New Age Media, I'm struggling to blend the top portion of the head. After I used the one guard following the chart you provided, I get lost in the fade. Any tips? Okay, so he, one more time. Let me let me digest that. I'm struggling to blend the top portion of the head. Oh, okay. After I use the one guard following the chart you provided, I get lost in the fade. Any tips? Okay, I got what you're saying. All right, so, yeah, the, the main tip that I'm going to have to give you on that one is you're going to have to learn how to use clipper over comb. Clipper over comb is going to be for, performed from about the length that you get of a number two. And if you're coming from a number two, you can do a really nice job with clipper over comb. So that's that's where I would point you because like if I jump to this that other shit side, look hard. if I jump to this oh other side real quick, all right. And I still haven't done this yet, but all I did was take it up to about a, a one and one half. The thickness of this comb yes. and the one and one half are very close. So like if I put this up against the side of his head. All right, that's going to give me close to the distance, right? So all I need to do here is I need to just lift this out. He's got a lot of gel in his hair, so I can really kind of see, you know, and just lift it out, cut, begin lifting. And that's the deal here. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a look down the side of his head like this, right? I'm going to see if there's anything sticking out, anything that's going to cause me problems, issues, or concerns. I'm going to see it right there. So that's kind of what I do. I kind of look for that and... That's, that's how I address it. So when you're, when you're struggling from getting it to the top, usually you need to work on taking your number two to clipper over comb into that length on the top. All right, so we got a razor here. Let's edge this man up. Will cordless have battery packs soon? Well, that's a good question. You know, you think about your phone, it lasts 24 hours and your cordless clipper doesn't even last an hour. So kind of like double standard there, you would think that you would think that they would have something by now that would be a little bit better, but no one cares about us. We're not consumer market. That's what we got to remember. Like, we're not general consumers. We're barbers, so we got to always take a back seat in technology. I mean, I've talked about this a couple times. It's, it's not fair, but you would buy millions of those clippers if they were good. I bet. Thank you, buddy. What guard number is the green comb? Oh, jeez. <laughs> I didn't expect it to come rushing out like that. <laughs> The green comb? Oh, the that comb that I'm using. holding here? Yes. Like, if you were to take this, it's pretty close to about a 1.5 if you were to measure the back. So, at least it's long enough, you know what I mean? Couldn't you use thinning shoes? I could. I could, but truth is, I didn't bring them. Like I said, this video was sort of filmed on the fly here, so... All right, so when when I do these hard part, like I'm gonna I'm gonna line up that hard part portion first. When I do that, I like to address the front length a little bit first. So if you come in on, you can come in like sneak right in on here, so you can see like how I'm doing it. Yeah. Yeah, you good, bro. Yeah, well, you leave So when I come in here, I just want to wipe this all out. Um, always check for bumps or abrasions. Like I'm feeling with my thumb. I'm feeling for anything that could cause me to cut them. 
I really don't want to cut anybody live on uh, YouTube, so <laughs> don't laugh, bro. Don't laugh. He laughed. So notice how I just take like a little bit at a time. Like you don't want to begin your hard part all the way back here because you're going to have to push too hard. There's going to be too much hair there. But if you're just taking a tiny bit at a time, and you're working your way through it. You know, you're going to be you're going to be fine. You'll be able to get that line nice and straight the way you want it. And everything's going to be clean. I got to ask a question. What's up, buddy? You, we're told constantly not to hold the razor at almost a 90 because it cuts. How are you able to make that hard part so clean while holding that straight razor damn near 90 degrees to the skin? Well, I'm not holding it 90. Like, if I was no, 90, well, it would be like pretty this. up there. Yeah, I want it to be up there because I want it to be able to cut. These razors are good, dude. This razor is a nice razor. What kind of razor is this one? Black Widow. It's, it's, it's really sharp. It's nice to Those actually are, grab a good razor that's sharp right off the bat. And... Those are the Dorco blades upstairs. Yeah, right. Aren't they? Can't be. Okay, girl. Do you wear gloves for hygiene reasons? No. I wear gloves because it looks cool. No, I'm just playing it. I wear I wear gloves because I get really bad splinters. See, he's got a little bump there. I was real careful around that. Are Dor Dorco good razors or not? Nah? Um, I think Dorco's really went down the dumpster lately. I always put the link in the description for um, the blades that I've been using a lot lately or the Astras or Astras or whatever. I think those are pretty good, but this particular blade has been pretty nice. This blade is really sharp. I'm really not struggling at all to get, you know, the look that I want with it. So do you want to hold the razor at a 45 degree angle? Like, without getting too scientific about it, obviously I don't want to touch him straight like this because that's definitely going to cut him. But anything, anything um, north of straight, just 45 degrees or so, you're going to be fine. You're not going to cut nobody. Like, and chances are probably the majority of the time when you cut somebody, it's not an actual slice. Like, you're probably going to pull a hair out at the root, and that's going to cause, like, a little droplet of blood, which really isn't even a, a, a true cut. And there's nothing you could really do about that to stop that from happening. Um, just, you know, you're going to just try your best. Uh, we should probably line his eyebrows up a little bit. So what I do with the eyebrows, I always just come in and just kind of come across this way. I always do a reverse backhand for this side of the eyebrow just because it's easier to get to and this side of the eyebrow. Which is why I'm like always trying to, trying to tell you guys, like learn all your strokes um, so that you don't you don't have a problem. How is that straight razor performing? Um, this one is very nice. I can't complain. <laughs> I'm gonna get a little bit of stuff down here and we'll get his Remember how I told you guys before, like, don't worry so much about around the ears? Come look, I got hair all over his ears still. I didn't worry too much about that. I know the Bronze Series 9 doesn't get down. Look over here. up here, Yeah. I know the Bronze Series 9 doesn't get in them areas so easy. So, you know, that's why you got your straight razor. You just come in here and just wipe that out. What do you think of the single finger holding razor? I think it's a gimmick and it's stupid. There you go. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that is. I mean, it's just, it's just, it's just a gimmick. It's goofy. It doesn't help you. In fact, I think it'll hurt you because it'll stop you from being able to actually manipulate the razor the way you should be able to. I've used them a couple times, and I wondered the same thing. But after I used, them, I was like, oh, I, I see why they suck now. How much for this cut did you charge? Uh, twenty. Actually, twenty-one is what I charge in the shop. Bobby Sadewa, Sadewa, Barber Guru, you are the best, sir. I really appreciate that, sir. Thank you for watching and thank you for uh, subscribing and stuff, man. All you guys have really made a huge impact here. This has just been awesome. The fact that this channel has grown, to, it'll be probably 22,000 subscribers by tomorrow. I'll just leave this video up, I guess. I was going to go through the trouble of filming it. Hey, do you guys like these question and answering sessions? You want to do more of this kind of stuff? Can you do a review on the .5 caliber clippers? Uh, you got me. I've never seen them.
What is it? Who makes that? Uh, yes, they love the videos. And <laughs> keep this video great tutorial. Live is the way to go. Yo, because live is so much easier than sitting around and editing it, I'll tell you. <laughs> It'd be a lot harder without my man Sterling here filming it for you guys. It'd be almost impossible for me to give you guys the views and stuff that that um, he's able to show you. More Q and A's. It's unanimous. Hey, I'll start doing this. I'll start doing this more often. I mean, hell, we can start doing this some Tuesdays. All right, so check it out. He's got some long hair and his eyebrows. And what I always do is I take a, a taper comb a lot of times, but I usually take an open number one, and that's usually good enough to knock out all them, them wayward uh, eyebrows that are just sticking out and not causing it to look too good. we we'll get those out of there. I warn you with using the, the open one on people's eyebrows, if they got really blonde eyebrows or something like that, like, be careful because you could just wipe them off of the face of the earth, and then they'll have no eyebrows left. So... You want to cut the top? Thank you, Aztec. Appreciate um, it. Pretty good on top. I don't know. I think the top's pretty good. Uh, I will. You see it better than I do. Brandon's liking the top. He's liking uh, the fade and everything. Pretty much done, guys. I mean, so that's kind of the finished result right there. Spin them one more time. One more again? Yeah. All right. <laughs> How's it looking in that camera? It look all right? It looks great, man. Very HD. You know, like, a lot of times, a lot of times when I do these tutorials, like, I sit down and, like, I, I beat myself up about it because it ain't, like, absolutely perfect. I look at the camera, I look at the angle, I look at the lights, and I think, like, you know how much footage I've thrown out because it wasn't absolutely perfect? This is probably the way to go, so at least you guys will see it once before I wind up deleting it if I don't like it. <laughs> but, all right, you guys, um... Congratulations to the winner. I sent him a message. We'll see what happens. If, if he doesn't uh, get back to me, I'll give it away again. If there's any other questions before I go, let him, let him go right now because we're done. Where is your shop located in Florida? Oh, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, yeah, my, my shop is located in Naples, Florida. And actually, I, I kind of plan on doing some clinics in the shop pretty soon. I'm not really sure. I haven't figured out all the details for that yet. But I, I would like for people to bring their own um, person, you know, an actual client or something into the shop, and then I can work with you guys one-on-one -on -one or two-on-one -on -one or whatever uh, to, to help you, you know, grow a little bit in the business. But, yeah, my shop is located at 20, 2700 on Immokalee Road, uh, Naples, Florida. So what y'all think of the design? Y'all like it? It's a real easy design. I do kind of different combinations of stuff all the time. They love the design. Do a review on the Caliber brand clippers, Mark P. I got to get them to send me one, man. I don't even know what that is. I'm about to go do my research. <laughs> right now, I'm about to go do my research. That's why it's good. Myself. Has anybody in this room heard of them? All right, you got, you got one on us. You got one on us. I got to do my research. Um, I'm, I'm always looking forward to see what new, new brands are doing. Who's putting out what? You guys know? Can anybody name my least favorite Clipper brand out there? Can anybody name it? Babulous. Oh, you already knew it. <laughs> everybody knows I'd be hating on a Babulous. Why do, you, why do you dislike them so much? Wait, if I had a Babulous here, I would pretend like I finished the cut with that. Like, oh, it was so needed. I needed to finish that cut with the Babulous because uh, I'm not sponsored by Babulous. So I ain't got to do nothing. So... <laughs> so all right, you guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for watching. Stick, uh, stay tuned. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already because I'm going to be giving away them Oscar Fast Feeds with the Home Front Edition, and you guys are going to definitely want to get in on that. I don't know what I'm going to do for that. I haven't even got a clue. Uh, but, yeah, so just check it all out, and I'll see you guys in my next video. I'm out of here.